cardiology and he is an expert uh, in imaging physiology and uh, complex procedures uh, welcome to the program sir and uh, i would like to welcome now i would like to welcome dr v sujatha madam is a senior consultant cardiologist uh, of uh, indus hospital visakhapatnam and uh, is an expert in uh, complex procedures uh, welcome to the program ma'am uh dr uh, rajiv c uh, is yet to join uh, sir would be acting as expert panel uh, sir is a clinical professor of amrda institute of medical science uh, cochin uh, sir would be joining in, a, in another couple of minutes we were actually anticipating a, a guest speaker today uh, dr kr balakrishnan uh, chairman of uh, mgm healthcare chennai but uh, due to the climatic conditions in uh, chennai uh sir has called up and uh, he won't be joining today uh, so uh, then we will continue with our speakers we have a list of uh, senior uh, speakers today we have dr chirak seth uh, uh, who would be joining now he is a, a consultant cardiologist of rhythm heart institute uh, vadodara uh, sir has already joined welcome sir then we have dr uh, pravin dr pravin gk uh, sir is a consultant cardiologist from uh, suit hospital trivandrum uh, we have dr lijo vergis uh, sir is a uh, professor and consultant intervention cardiologist of uh, kmch uh, medical college uh, coimbatore uh, welcome to the program sir then we have dr sajan ahmed uh, he is assistant professor in cardiology and uh, consultant cardiologist at uh, pushpagiri medical college uh, uh, thiruvalla uh, kerala uh, so i would like to hand over the session to the moderators right now uh, sir uh, please take over thank you very much uh thank you uh, ajit uh, for that uh, warm introduction and uh, so we will uh, go to the uh, session proper this is the second uh, uh, session in that uh, primary uh, when abbot contacted me to suggest a topic i only suggested that because it's a very common thing and it's very exciting because uh, the primary pca gives you the option of dealing with the unexpected it can be a very straightforward uh, 80% lesion which goes on like a smooth affair and it can be very unexpected like a occluded left main for instance the patient can be unstable both mechanically as well as electrically you may have to be prepared for the unexpected and that is very very vital and that's what makes primary angioplasty very special and different from the conventional uh, interventions and that is why i look forward as much as uh, everybody else to all your presentations over to dr sujatha for your uh, for your introductory comments so it's uh, my pleasure always to be with uh, the south you know especially kerala i like it very much the presentations uh, are top notch so i think we'll just delve right into the case the first case presentation so we, we can have more time for discussion so as ajit said in the beginning uh, we were uh, we, we were expecting a, a brilliant key, keynote speakers lecture on Uh, advanced heart therapy options particularly mechanical circulatory support by none other than the doyen in the field of uh, heart transplantation heart lung transplantation supports etc lvads etc but unfortunately he couldn't join us so we have a little extra time i request all the speakers to spend more time with their presentation highlight points so that the uh, listeners will take home as many messages as possible at the end so don't be in a rush you can take 15 to even 18 minutes or so uh, we'll have detailed discussion after every case and i request the first speaker dr chirag sheth uh, who has already been introduced over to dr shiraj uh, for your presentation not able to hear you well not able to hear you very well even Hello, though it's very, uh, feeble, uh, it's very feeble keep the mic close to you the mic maybe you can hold your mic yeah can you hold your mic close to your mouth sir that's right like that yeah. uh, is it fine now uh in mm -hmm. the computer panel itself can you increase the volume sometimes that can be a problem actually yeah. is it is it like that no actually it's his mic sir actually is the mic what is capturing it his uh, output is, input is very less Yes, sir, I think you're. It's taking from your speaker, speaker micro. I mean your computer microphone. Your let him join. Let him. Let him come. Let him come. Okay. Okay. Hello. 
yeah we can hear you but still uh, yeah. not uh, yeah sir it is still little less uh, but uh, my hello hello can yeah. you speak a few words yeah it's little better actually fine so maybe i will speak a little louder is it fine yeah now it's better now All it's right. better go ahead go ahead okay okay fine Doctor Chirag, your microphone is removed. That's why you have gone out of your uh, the panelist. But I can see your screen from externally. Can you make sure your headphones are connected properly, sir? Doctor Chirag. Hello. Uh, hello, Lidjo. Hello, Pranan. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, Lidjo from Abbott. Sorry, doctor. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, yes. Lidjo, yeah. Uh, can you just contact Doctor Chirag? His device is showing your device is mic or cam is not correct connected. Probably his uh, uh, the microphone is not connected properly. Okay. I can see. However, he has shared his screen, so I can see his screen. Doctor Natarajan, do you want to move on to the next speaker? If okay, in that case, uh, by the time uh, he sorts out his uh, presentation, we'll go to the next by uh, Doctor Ashwin Kuran from. Uh, Metro Hospital Calicut. Dr. Ashwin, you can share your screen and we'll come back to Dr. Chirag after that. Okay, okay, sure. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, going to. Yeah, it is visible. So I have to press hide, right? Uh, you have to uh, go to slide, slide, yes, slide, yes, slide yes, show yes, option I, and then hide. Yes, sir. Slide show. Yeah. yeah. Yes, great, great, great. Okay, good evening. I am uh, Dr. Ashwin. I am from uh, MICC Calicut. So, today's um, case I would be presenting is a mishap that uh, occurred recently, around two, three weeks back with me uh, while doing a primary PCI. So I have labeled or I have given a caption for my case as 1 to 5 in 40. Uh, we will see as we go on why that name came up. So my case is a 62 year old lady. She is a known diabetic and hypertensive who presented with complaints of chest pain since one day. She was um, in pain at the time of presentation, but her vital signs were uh, stable. BP was 130, 90, pulse rate of uh, 88 per minute and systemic examination was fairly normal. So ECG done revealed um, there were ST elevations in the inferior leads and ST depressions in uh, V1 to V3. She had um, a regional wall motion abnormality in the inferior wall with uh, a fair LV function. So uh, with the diagnosis of infro posterior wall MI, um, the by Sanders were told about the need for a primary PCI and she was taken to the cath lab. So uh, we did uh, a coronary angiography through the right radial route, um, taking up um, a tiger uh, diagnostic catheter. So as you can see, the RCA showed uh, proximal, there was some uh, mild disease. With distal, there was a critical stenosis. And PDA was occluded and later on, we saw that it was filling from the um, a uh, left uh, shot. So this was the injection of the left system. Caudal view showed um, there was definitely left main. There was some disease of around uh, uh, around 40 percent. Distal LCX, as you can see, is um, occluded after the OM, and there was staining. So that was um, our diagnosis was that was a culprit lesion. 
and uh, a cranial um, shot showed a tandem lesion in the mid um, uh, LAD around 80% stenosis so uh, our plan was to um, do a primary PCI to this LCX and uh, later on um, a staged uh, procedure to the uh, LAD so uh, we explained to the relatives uh, regarding that it is not just a, a single uh, lesion she's got multiple uh, issues but uh, the best we can do at present is um, fix her left circumflex and then go on to the LAD after um, giving a gap of say 48 hours. So they were willing for the same. And uh, we went um, uh, radially itself for her using a six French e EBU 3.5 guide. And um, what uh, uh, wire we used was a field ref C. And uh, uh, without um, uh, much of issues, uh, the lesion was crossed. And as soon as the wire went, there was some flow into the lesion. And um, as usual, we predilated with a 2 into 10 millimeter uh, semi compliant balloon, a fair result. And we standard the distal, um, uh, distal LCX using a 2.75 into 23 millimeter drug eluting stent which went in um, okay, no problems. And um, we post dilated um, that with a three into nine millimeter non-compliant balloon. The uh, result was acceptable. So we were happy we could get it done uh, quickly. And the um, patient was clinically stable. And I thought I'll take out the wire, get um, a final injection and then uh, finish the case. So that's when the problem started. So as I took out the wire, I was more uh, um, uh, focusing on the stent, whether the flow is good. And uh, I didn't realize that the guide had made more of an acute angle and uh, it was uh, impinging onto the roof of the left main. And uh, the next uh, injection I gave, it dissected. It was a massive dissection. It was uh, extending from the left main into the LAD, as you can see, and also into the LCX and OM. There is also a um, retrograde dissection into the towards the ostium and probably into the aortic cusp. So this is when the patient clinically started to deteriorate a bit. She um, started complaining of uh, chest pain, uneasiness. She started having a bit of bradycardia, heart rate went down to 52. And uh, BP also came down to around 100. There was anesthetist by my side who was taking care of that luckily. and. Um, I could see that ECG was starting to show an uh, right bundle branch block with ST elevation now in the anterior leads. So um, luckily I didn't manipulate the guide much. My only priority, next priority was to quickly wire uh, both LAD and LCX. Um, so luckily I could wire both without much of issues. Initially I wired the LAD uh, with a field ref C wire and uh, I could um, wire the LCX too. As you can see, the um, staining into the diagonal, everything is visible, though I was, I didn't take any further check shots. And keeping the roadmap of that cranial LAD view, I deployed two stents into the LAD. So one fra into the dis mid to distal LAD, it was a uh, uh, three into 38 millimeter uh, drag eluting stent, which was deployed at around 12 atmosphere. The next stand I took uh, was a 3.5 into 34 millimeter. Um, luckily, that too went also without any problem. And approximately, I kept it uh, near the ostium of the left main and quickly inflated it. So after this is when I uh, took my check shot, next check shot. So fairly, um, there was a flow into the distal LED. The diagonal was occluded with staining. And uh, approximately, there was some dissection with um, staining into the left main into the cusp. So um, luckily, by the time I did this, uh, the patient stabilized a bit. In fact, um, she her BP stabilized, her heart rate stabilized, and I could see that ST elevation with RBBV was also settling. So, and luckily she didn't have a cardiac arrest. She didn't go into uh, asystole. No cardiac massage was required. And uh, as you can see in the right side caudal view, there is some haziness in the osteoproximal uh, LCX as we had seen in the initial uh, dissected shot that uh, even the LCX and into the OM dissection was extending into. 
so um, when i when i put the left main to led stand um, i took out the wire from the lcx uh, the jailed wire and uh, next what i did was i post dilated so um, Disley, I did with three and three point five millimeter, and approximately in the uh, osteal LED left main area with four millimeter below. So uh, this was a Sunday. Um, I was alone in the cath lab at that time. Luckily, she gave me time, and um, uh, as soon as dissected, I had called for help. Um, a co-consultant also came in. So I was um, happy that at least she was clinically; she didn't deteriorate till then. Now the next thing was uh, what to be done for the um, LCX. So it was definitely there was uh, haziness in the osteoproximal part, and um, uh, we thought that it is better to um, stent the osteal LCX and the proximal part too, with overlapping stent into the uh, the first stent, the primary stent that I had put in. Now the issue was um, uh, one the guide was a six French guide. It was an ox guide, so doing a traditional um, tap was a bit difficult, and um, we thought we would do some sort of a modified tap. So what we did was um, we opened the struts with the 1.52 millimeter balloons, the LM to LED stand, and uh, with great difficulty we could manage to get in that um, a proximal LCX stent, which was a 3 into 33 millimeter. Regulating stent with great difficulty, it could be passed into the LCX, uh, kept a bit protruding into the left uh, main, and then we deployed it. Now uh, the thing was we didn't have a balloon across from LM to LED uh, like we do in tap, so there was uh, definitely a part of stent protruding into the left main, and uh, we had to crush it. So now the next problem was. Um, there was difficulty in uh, balloon going. There was definitely we had to put in a 1.5 millimeter balloon and then crush it. Then a 2 2.5, and finally we could um, get a 4 millimeter balloon across uh, LM to LED across the mouth of the LCX stent. And uh, we were happy now that uh, we needed to do a kissing now. So it was an ox guide, remember, and um, luckily we could pass two N non-compliant balloons, a three millimeter balloon into the LCX with which we post dilated, and this four millimeter um, NC balloon into LM to LED. So uh, luckily in an, a six friend guide, it went in and we did a kissing with, um, with good result. Now the thing was we had, um, Looking carefully, we had I had missed the actual uh, the ostium of the left main, and there was this backward dissection into the cusp and into the left main ostium. So we thought there could be edema, there could be blood collection and um, uh, pinging of the ostial left main. So a short uh, stent, um, four into eight millimeter stent, was deployed in the ostial uh, left main at um, adequate pressures. And then we did a uh, post dilatation also with a 4.5 into 6 millimeter balloon. We did a pot. Um, there was a good result. As you can see, there is staining definitely in the aortic cusp. And um, looking carefully, I don't know if you will be able to see, but uh, the so has got um, uh, mild uh, this dissection definitely, but it was a flowing dissection. Probably the initial dissection which had traveled down. But uh, we thought since it was flowing, not to do much with uh, that. So uh, the patient was clinically stable. We had uh, completed everything uh, with the, uh, through the radial route using a six French ox guide. And um, yeah, these were the final results. So finally, what we thought uh, would stop at one stent, we had to use a total of five stents in approximately um, uh, 45 minutes and uh, we were lucky with God's grace that we could save the patient's life at that uh, moment. So a few points to ponder and um, lessons we learned whether the choice of guide yes initially whether we should have gone with a Judkin left guide when we saw that the distal left main had plaquing some amount of disease. 
and um, actually the primary pca went off well i did not give careful notice to the um, guide position in the final shot and that was what caused the dissection so luckily early dissection saved time and uh, we had to use multiple stents but we could do it um, in a six french ox guide we could do kissing with two n balloons and um, luckily we could uh, save the patient's life so having a team and uh, help is a great advantage and um, extra pair of hands definitely helped the patient in the end and anesthesia backup was of immense help but above all it was divine intervention that um, actually saved uh, the patient and uh, saved us in this nightmare so that's my case thank you uh, for your patient hearing thank you uh, dr ashwin for that uh, excellent case this is what the idea of the entire session on primary pca is not everything goes according to our plan as i told in the beginning and uh, you showed uh, the first case itself was a great example of uh, what i said in the very beginning uh, and uh, what do you think was the cause of the left main dissection um one there was definitely disease in the distal left main and my guide position is what i think um caused the dissection okay uh I, at this point i welcome my good friend dr rajiv uh, who joined a little later i think he was held up in the hospital with a busy right. outpatient clinic okay. welcome dr rajiv for the uh, session and uh, i would straight away pass on to i okay. I'll let dr sujada add some comments and then we'll come to dr rajiv dr sujada you want to add something to this yeah, case I think, uh, proximal to the lcx there was disease even initially like uh, after stenting the first stent there was disease proximal to the lcx which could have been uh, which i thought uh, would have needed intervention but uh, suddenly i see that there is a left main dissection and uh, the only thing i wanted to tell was uh, when you were it was not a tap so possibly when you were stent uh, keeping the second stent in the as you yourself mentioned when you were placing the second stent in the circumflex maybe we could have put a balloon maybe because it was a six french guide and um, you uh, maybe a balloon won't have gone that's the reason why did you try to yeah, yeah, that, or, uh, that was the reason it was six french ox guide and um, actually we could not pass a balloon and a stent so we had to modify it and uh, finally did you end Pardon After me. the kissing and again proximal stand, did you do a pot? Yeah, with a pot with a 4.5. We flared the ostium also with a 4.5 to 6 millimeter balloon. Okay, it's a very great save. Huh? Really, I mean, yeah, uh, now it was uh, the patient didn't have a cardiac arrest. Right. I quite agree with Dr. Dr. Raji. Uh, before dr rajiv comes i quite agree with what dr sujada said on two points one uh, that uh, there was some disease in the circumflex proximal to the first stent after the stent number 1 was put it could have been a little longer in hindsight we are not questioning but okay. it could have been uh, 5 to 8 mm yes, longer yes. you could have covered that that wouldn't have prevented the la uh, left main dissection but uh, it could have uh, covered the entire plaque number 1 and uh, i always rely on the lao cranial view to position the left main stent the ostium of the left main is the best profiled in the lao cranial view without the masquerading of the sinus in all other views the sinus when it get opacified it will hide the ostium the best view which profiles the left main ostium even in tricky situations like this is a lao cranial view that would have avoided the stent number 5 in your case you could have you could have stented it from the ostium uh, very correctly in this case uh, dr rajiv I, uh, what yeah, is your yeah, yeah. what are your comments in this case yeah i will start from the angiogram itself before all this happened see you have a critical lesion in the precrux rca and and last toy is occluded that means there's contiguous ischemia so it's different when you have another different area but this is contiguous area where there is significant ischemia that's probably why it had so much of st changes and the, the uh, oim stent i think you possible with 3 i, I wouldn't probably do that much because it's over dilated the uh, the the uh, stent because circumflex generally we have to undersize a little bit sir 0.25 from what you see uh, lady size according to the vessel and rca slightly more 0.25 uh, extra 
So that is sure. uh, one thing. Uh, then the dissection uh, it happened, but uh, you could have probably prevented if you put an, uh, put another wire in the LED. Generally, I do I put one more wire, even if it's a fail, unless it's a very straightforward one. So the guide will be coaxial, so the chance of dissection will be much reduced. So it's a good habit to put uh, I could put an aux wire in some other branch in anywhere in the LED. Need not cross the lesion. Put uh, and, and this thing. So you could have probably prevented it. It's a good habit to have. You don't lo uh, lose anything. And when you have dissection from the left main into the LED, into the circumflex, the patient is crashing. We don't have time for all these uh, complex uh, procedures or maneuvers. So it's though the reason is very high. If you want to save the patient for the time being, uh, de uh, 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 simultaneous kissing is a is an easy and uh, straightforward thing. Of course, the response will be very high, so we don't recommend it. But suppose the patient is, the immediate aim is to save the patient from the table. So uh, put two stents from either side and uh, finish with it. And the dissection extending into the iota, that is very dangerous because it can quickly extend down, dissect down into the iliacs. They have had a patient that was done uh, in 2009. So he had a dissection while uh, doing an angio of the RCA. So within within a minute, he had dissection extending into the iliacs. So immediately extended the RCA ostium and uh, kept him on medical follow-up. Even today, he came for follow-up. So that iotic dissection, then you have to immediately extend very fast. That's an immediate thing that you have to do. I think, uh, Dr. Abdullah, time you put the distal stand first and then came back to the proximal LED, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Left main to yes. LED. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so he had time. Yeah, uh, the order of stent also, probably uh, in such a crash, it is better to settle the ostium of the left main quickly. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That is the biggest danger. That is the biggest danger. And so uh, probably we, one can always uh, do it differently in the sense you can put a stent from the left main ostium into the LED as much as it uh, it permits you using the LAO cranial view to your advantage to position the uh, stent right at the ostium with probably one strut in the iota. So that would have been uh, a better strategy. And uh, one thing which you have, you took a little bit of a gamble in not keeping a balloon in the uh, left main to uh, in the in the left main to LED when you stented the ostium of the as Dr. Sujada said in the beginning, or in a given case when you are not when your day is not good, a balloon may not enter. Even a low profile balloon may not enter theoretically. So uh, maybe you should make every effort to have a balloon there because you you r run a small risk of not being able to take a balloon inside. Even with the N balloons, it may not be possible on a given day when the stent protrusion is more than what you intended to do. That is something uh, which can go wrong sometimes. So uh, I think uh, Ashwin, he, you said that uh, extra pair of hands are useful. I would say that extra pair of hands and extra brain is very useful because you are the primary operator. You can't think normally. Generally, you'll be working under LM level. You'll be thinking about the bystanders more than the patient. So an extra, extra person with a brain who is really not too much worried about facing the bystander, so he can really uh, uh, help you. He can't be more. He won't be more. He can just be scientific and help you. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. In a crisis, In a you crisis, don't. Uh, you are not able to think. That's what he is trying to say. Yeah, yeah. It's always good yeah, to yeah. have uh, a, a, a well wisher as your assistant or your uh, colleague to come and help you in this case. Before we go to the next case, now that we have time. Uh, we can invite some uh, a one minute comment from the other presenters on this particular case. Uh, Praveen, my good friend uh, GK Praveen, you want to add something to this case? You can unmute yourself. Praveen, unmute. Uh, sir, I had some network issues, so I, I didn't see the case properly. So. Okay. I didn't see. I didn't. I couldn't see the case. Okay. Okay. Sajan, you want to say something, Sajan? Nothing, sir. Nothing more. Uh, Doctor Lijo. <laughs> yeah. Um. I think it was a very good discussion. Uh, very well managed. Um. Only thing is, when you have distal left main, like you mentioned, uh, when you use extra backup guides, um, I, I, I've had this issue 
more often with EBU than the Cordis guides. I, I probably the something to do with the tip of the guide. Um, yeah, but then I wouldn't change the choice of guide in this case. Uh, JL, yes, but like like Dr. Rajiv said, putting a wire in the LED certainly will help, and and uh, very well managed at the end. Um, I, I finally, may have done an IVS if you had one just to look at the left main opposition. That's the only final point I would have added. That's all. Dr. Chirag, you want to say something uh, about this case? Anything you would have done differently, thought differently? Uh, no, no. I think uh, most of the things have been discussed, and uh, it has been an excellent save. Uh, right. That's correct. Yeah. When you actually stand the circumflex ostium, you, most of us will have a wire uh, from the left main to the LED. More so if there is a disease in the distal left main. This particular patient, you did not intend to do the LED in the same sitting, right? Or were you no, planning no, to do the LED in the same sitting? After forty eight hours, maybe. Yeah. Now that the disease in the LED is L circumflex that you intend to stand is far distal to the ostium, uh, one can always argue saying that uh, there is no need for a wire from the left main into the LED. But as Dr. Rajiv said, in the distal left main disease, etc., it gives you that kind of a coaxiality. It is unlikely to go hit the plaque. Even if it uh, goes inside inadvertently, the wire will actually prevent it from hitting the plaque directly because the wire has a protective role. That's what probably Dr. Raji was trying to tell. Yeah, indeed. Okay. So now uh, we will go to the next case. Uh, Dr. Chirag, you are ready with your presentation. Now your audio, audio is also good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready yeah, with please, my Please share your yeah. screen. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, doctors also to mention the questions will be put in the private chat. How do we access the chat box? Uh, just click the right hand side and click on private chat. Right hand side? Yeah, right hand side of your screen, there's a private chat button. I don't see it. Mm. Uh, private chat, you're not getting to see on the right answer. You mean that uh, box which says mute, stop cam, uh, share screen in that box you don't have? No, 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 no. no. That is the bottom bottom of your yeah. screen. Check to the right of your screen, sir. Yeah, yeah, but the screen uh, blank. Okay. Okay. To just what work, uh, maybe one of you can read it out, actually. It will take time. Uh, it will take third. Hmm? Okay, uh, Dr. Problem. Chirag is uh, presenting now. Hello. Yes, go ahead, Chirag. Yeah, Dr. Chirag, you want me to help you to share your screen? Just click on the share screen button. Hello. Uh, doctor went offline, actually. Uh, maybe uh, I think he wanted some time because he still has some difficulty. In that case, uh, okay. we will come back to Dr. Chirag after we listen to Dr. Praveen GK. Praveen, you can show your uh, case. Yeah. Once Dr. Praveen presents his case, we will address the questions from the previous case also. Right. Is my screen visible? Yes. Uh, good evening, uh, respected chairpersons, expert panelists, and uh, dear colleagues. Uh, so today I will be presenting uh, two of my primary cases, uh, one which I had done a few years back and one recently. So my first case, uh, this was done uh, five years ago. Uh, the patient was a 55-year-old uh, gentleman, hypertensive, smoker, and he presented with a chest pain of three-hour duration and the ECG showed uh, anterior wall MI. And uh, the echo showed R RWMA and the LV function was fair, around 50%. So this was the angiogram. So the an anomalous RCA, uh, borderline disease in the 
PLB. So the LAD showed a uh, proximal 95% disease and uh, beyond that, the, it was giving rise to a large diagonal with the osteoproximal disease. And uh, the, the middle LAD, uh, after the diagonal, it was uh, showing a 95% lesion with thrombus. So the diagonal was as big or uh, slightly bigger than the LAD. So initially, we thought we would uh, go for a bifurcation two strand strategy. Then, but the time was around uh, 1 a.m. Uh, in the night. So we thought uh, rather than complicating everything, we'll just uh, try with a single strand strategy. So we uh, were in two minds whether to go for a DK crush or a culotte versus a single stand. Finally, everybody was tired, and so we thought we'll go with a single stand strategy. So we wired both the vessels and uh, directly stended the lady with the two 2.5 signs. Two point seven five signs, and then uh, we did a pot with a three balloon. But uh, actually, during the pot, the balloon had moved slightly downwards, and uh, we had uh, pinched the ostium after the pot. So we recrossed and gave a, gave a balloon dilatation with a two O balloon and the kissing dilatation. Uh, but still, the LED was not looking well, but it was flowing. So we thought we'll just uh, leave it like that. Oh, sorry, that was another thing. Oh, that's another image. But the LED actually closed up. I think that image is. Can you see my screen? It's a blank screen. The images uh, are not seen. Yeah, I think. Some, some Can you uh, reshare, sir? Can you stop sharing and reshare? So just, uh, just give me a moment. Yes, yes, no problem. Yeah, uh, I think uh, it's come proper, sir. Yeah, it's come. It's come. Let's put it on slideshow. Hello. Hello. Now we can see your uh, screen. Really? Yeah, I, 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 the, two of the slides got skipped. That's why I wanted to show that images as well, but some problem. Oh, Actually, in between, the diagonal got closed off. So after the first dilatation, the diagonal got, got closed off. And then it was then we tried the kissing balloon. I think. Rewiring was not a problem. Rewiring re 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 was not a problem. Okay, okay, okay. I think maybe the thrombus got displaced or something. That's all. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh. Hello, doctor. Uh, if you have any trouble you are facing, doctor? Yeah, my laptop is also, it has got very slowed down because of too many presentations. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is another reason for this and uh, oh, no, no, no. Just, just a moment it's yeah, a no, large no. file so. maybe you can start from the beginning in case that helps no they see it's still hanging the computer. Okay. 
Praveen, uh, GK, can you try? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, no, five? no. I, I can. I can. Slides. Oh. The original files rather than the slides. No, that is not going to be. In Apple, usually that is not a problem. Uh, this thing. So I think I'll start from the beginning. That's right. I think two files got, two slides got skipped uh, unknowingly. That is the reason why I couldn't show you that image. So when I play the full screen, uh, the skipped images, skip, skip slides won't be showing. So That's this was okay. the images. Uh, This, I think you have seen this. So after post dilatation, what happened was the diagonal got pinched and then we thought the, uh, it was okay, but uh, we took out the wire, the flow wire, we thought it was reasonable. We'll do it later if it required after one or two days after heparin and all. Then we took out the wire and then the diagonal got completely closed off. I'll show you the images later after the presentation because if I come back, sometimes it may get hung up again. So then we did a kissing, a dilatation of the diagonal ostium and a kissing dilatation. But again, we got a similar image like we had initially because after this image, we had taken out the wire and then the diagonal closed up. So we didn't want to want that to happen again. So then we thought we'll do a two stand strategy uh, and uh, we, we opted for a reverse crush. So we placed a balloon in the lady stand. We took care of the 2.75, 23 sign stand. Got uh, crushed the stent, dilated the struts after rewiring a kissing dilatation. And the pot. And after the pot, there was some uh, under deployment, the lady stent, so we post dilated again and again gave a kiss and a pot. So the lady stand looks good here. So this was the final image. Uh, you can see some uh, uh, haziness there in the stand just after the diagonal. Uh, it was uh, thrombus most likely. We didn't have imaging, so we didn't do that. So this was the final result after the procedure. And uh, the it has been five years, and uh, till now the patient is uh, doing fine. He is under regular follow. So uh, this is a case of uh, reverse crush or internal crush, uh, which is a bailout strategy when you opt for a bifurcation uh, provisional stent strategy in a bifurcation stenting, and where you don't have a good angle uh, or the angle is less than seventy degree, uh, you are left with two options: either go for a culotte or uh, uh, reverse crush. We opted for reverse crush here because uh, the LAD stand was too much into the proximal LAD and we didn't want to put a longer uh, double uh, metal uh, inside the uh, proximal LAD. So that's why we opted for a reverse crush. So this is the reverse crush technique. Uh, it's a, after the main stand, uh, you dilate, open up the struts, uh, you place a stand, crush the stand and the kissing balloon and the final pot. So the second case, uh, this was run about uh, 10 months ago. Uh, he was a 63 year old gentleman, hypertensive on irregular treatment. He uh, came with a history of chest pain and severe breathlessness uh, of two hours duration. The patient had severe crushing pain and he gave a history of uh, exertional dyspnea for the last two years. And he was managed as uh, bronchial asthma, oblique COPD in the respiratory medicine department of medical college. And he had worsened over two months and he was advised a cardiology opinion uh, from medical, but he was, he didn't uh, show up. 
And uh, when he presented, the BP was 80 over 50. His period was 78% and the ECG showed LBBP. And the echo showed uh, global hypokinesia with the EF around 30%. And there was no evidence of scarring. Uh, so we, uh, the, initially, the patient came with only uh, his wife. She was a, a 60 year old lady, uneducated, and she had no idea of what was happening. And uh, relative uh, to, she had two daughters. Uh, so she was trying to call one of her daughter over the phone, but she couldn't get over the phone. So a lot of time, about one hour went away uh, doing all this. By the time we managed the patient with an IV, LASIX, and the loading dose. So we were confused whether it is decompensated chronic heart failure because the patient has a history of uh, symptoms for the last two years and the worsening symptoms for the last two months and whether the LBB was new onset and overall there was no responsible bystander. Finally, a son-in-law over the phone told that you proceed, do doc doctor, you do whatever you want. But the patient was not that affordable as well. So finally, we decided to take up for a primary. Uh, this was the angiogram. You can see the LM is plaquey, uh, the circumflex is occluded. And we thought there was a uh, tight lesion and a faint channel there. The proximal LAD was occluded. Uh, with the diagonal arising from near the occlusion, which was uh, having around 90 95% disease there. And there was an early diagonal which was also deceased. And the RCA was totally occluded. So we decided to uh, do a primary PCI to a lady and uh, open up circumflex because we thought there was a channel and the patient was in uh, cardiogenic shock. And uh, PCI to RCA later. Dr. Praveen? Dr. Praveen? Yes, sir. We are not able to see your slides. Not able to see the slides? No, we are just, uh, the, the slide on the plan is there, but uh, that's not moving forward after that. Uh, yeah, that moving forward, just a moment, give me a moment. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, hello, doctor. Doctor Pravi. Sorry for the trouble. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think now your it is come back your screen. I believe there's a little lag in your system, sir. As you are having a difficulty in presenting this case, could we discuss the first case and get done with? Yeah, that's a reasonable idea. Dr. Praveen? I think he's facing some issues. Uh, okay. Um, uh, Dr. Sujada, you want to say something about his first case uh, where he showed that reverse crush technique? I, I was thinking possibly would have thrombolized the patient because the LED was flowing and uh, doing that technique in the middle of the night at one, I wouldn't have done it. I would have because the LED is flowing and if the patient has no chest pain, I would have taken up and possibly done. Uh, I would have done an elective double stenting because the diagonal is huge and maybe uh, avoided the reverse crush. I would have done the mini crush in the beginning itself. As Dr. Praveen also in the beginning of his presentation did mention that uh, the diagonal was in fact bigger than the LED. So I agree with you. With that kind of an osteolation, I would have gone for an upfront uh, two-stent strategy 
and probably to save time in the middle of the night i would have made it simple with a mini crush rather than a double crush technique a double uh, kissing uh, stent technique yeah. raji want to say something yeah i think uh, there is no way by which you could survive with the single sense strategy in that case because it's a huge diagonal the angle is 30 degrees and with osteal disease so it is a sh- sure uh, sign of uh, getting closed then another thing and when he did a pot probably it's a part of it was again the that uh, diagonal lost here so this the plaque shift and not the cardinal shift also so it's best in, in this case is the two stent strategy a mini crush it's it's simple it doesn't uh, take much time so a mini crush uh, as a primary choice would have been the best and the easiest okay and, uh, 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 Raji, one question to you. If yeah. uh, uh, ha- I agree with you, an upfront two strand strategy would have been better. Now that he chose to have it as a single strand uh, thing, what would have been your way of bailing out the diagonal after stenting the LED? If you were to that case and you faced that particular issue, what would be your strategy at that time? Yeah, uh, reverse crush is one option, uh, and there is a uh, uh, cola. Only we have to dial it with a larger balloon inside. The rest, uh, the normal size balloon and the larger balloon. Cola is an option. Uh, tap is well, not good. Can can tap, tap, tap. Tapping is not good because the angle is very bad. Tap you can do when the angle is uh, uh, near 90 degrees. So, so reverse crush. Uh, Rajan, or... sir, can can you hear me? We can hear you, but we can't see you. Yeah, uh, uh, even 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 I am not able to see my screen. Something happened. I'll just uh, try to switch off it and come back later. Uh, hope, but hope you are able to see yourself. The... Hope you are able to see yourself. Okay. What will uh, I'll, 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 I'll just yeah. answer one mm-hmm. point. But uh, Dr. Rajiv told because why we went little down was because. The stent was underdeployed in that portion. If you can see, there was an underdeployed portion at the point just beyond the diagonal. That is one of the reasons why we went a little down the diagonal when we post dilated with the three balloon. Yeah, I the stent was 2.5. You plan to do such a thing, you have to keep a little more stent proximally. So take a slightly longer bill and longer stent so that there is at least eight. Let's go there, there, was, there, was in, there was enough space for yeah. the stent. Uh, the, the underdeployed portion of the stent was just beyond the diagonal. Yeah, uh, but, so, but that's, uh, that's our prime, true, prime, but primary. When you do, when you do that, you ensure that it's a cardinal shift and uh, uh, it closes off the diagonal. Yeah, but uh, you can't leave a stent underdeployed uh, with a yeah, that's true, that's true, underdeployment. Right? That, that was the reason. That was that was In the such... reason why we took the balloon a little yeah. downward. We knew we knew it was like little down, but uh, we had no other option than. See, when and you try things, to keep things very simple, sometimes you end up in more problems. So uh, that is one no, no, I've been, I've been learned learned from this case. Simple. Simple would have been to go straight with uh, uh, Mini Crush. Because this is this uh, was going at, to at, at, at 1 o'clock in... Uh, in uh, that's what I'm telling. You could have said... You would have at 1 o'clock, time. we didn't go... Uh, yeah. <laughs> but this, this, this uh, didn't take much time. But initially, we wanted to save... Uh, much of the time and energy because sometimes when you do the uh, DK crush and uh, all the crush techniques, no, DK, takes, DK takes a lot of time. DK takes a lot of time, but uh, mini crush is fine. But, but, but one take. advantage of DK crush is the uh, crossing of the balloon. It's more easier with the DK crush. But now what we have learned, what we have been lo- doing since last few cases is that we don't take a small balloon. Nowadays with newer stents, you can directly take a new. Same balloon, stand, if the stand is three, you can take a, directly take a three balloon and that saves a lot of time. Initially, we used to just take a small balloon, open up the strut and then take a bigger balloon and do the kissing. Now what we do is the kisses, we take a new balloon that goes up as good as a normal balloon most of the time. You're talking, you're talking about DK crush. So D, DK crush, DK crush and mini crush sometimes what happens is because we have to cross through three layers of the strength, uh, sometimes it becomes difficult for the balloon to cross. That is what we uh, so we are uh, very skeptical not, in doing mini crush. I'm, I'm not very certain about that because crossing the DK crush is I find uh, with the balloon is more D- difficult. D- because D- a lot DK of crush. Or the, 
dk crush when the when first you... time when you cross when you cross you are crossing two layers of stem but in a mini crush when you cross in the do the first cross you have to cross three layers of struts two layers of the crush stem and and uh, one layer of the crush stem so uh, when you put layer, a so mini crush you don't have to uh, come too much you catch the upper end and rest will be a little one or two struts in, on the uh, angulated in, side inferior aspect yeah inferior yeah, but anyway uh, crossing is uh, what we feel is crossing is more easier with the uh, dk crush so the, that was uh, okay. i i just okay. want to point out one thing see it was a thrombotic lesion putting in so much material and uh, uh, you know it's uh, it's not uh, it's not that we can do it or not because we will we will end up in no reflow and uh, all this in the middle of the night was the patient thrombolyzed was the patient having pain why did you do it at one in the night the patient came with the it looked like adidivol and my he came with pain no no he had pain he had pain that's why we took him up in the middle of the night was he thrombolyzed no 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 not thrombolyzed mm -hmm. we we uh, we have been practicing giving upfront heparin usually uh, in almost all the cases when the patient comes to the emergency we give him a 5000 heparin when we load with the antiplatelets that i have been practicing for the last uh, 7 years so by the time sometimes when you take up the patient when the patient reaches a table you get a timi Uh, one timi two flow and it makes the procedure a lot of e easier more easier so that must be the reason why uh, it got but the patient had definitely pain that is why we took him up i agree with and, dr uh, we didn't want to do all this uh, uh. i agree with you dr praveen that uh, if a uh, patient comes with an st elevation myocardial infarction at whatever time of the day mm -hmm. if you have desired to do a primary pci you have taken axles you have done a diagnostic catheter and if the angioplasty is doable by pci you are committed to doing a pci uh, gone are those days where you know the anatomy and you back yeah. out in favor of thrombolysis unless angioplasty is not possible at all this case was a classic case where angioplasty is possible the main contention is whether you would do a primary two stent strategy versus one stent strategy was the main discussion uh, that came to my mind i would have definitely as dr ajeev said gone for an elective two stent strategy by whichever method i would have also kept uh, we have done substantial number of cases with many mini crush technique and uh, crossing is not an issue as you uh, yeah. as you said so i think uh, backing out from that particular stage the anatomy was definitely an angioplasty anatomy in my opinion sir i'm not saying back out i had a feeling so looking actually, at the we, uh, lady i felt possibly it was a thrombolyzed no. case I, uh, once no, we no, have no, committed no, we, to we, we definitely will go no, ahead no, no, and do it we don't it thrombolyze any patients unless i mean thrombolyzed and shifted uh, unless the patient is not no no her doubt is no, no. her doubt is whether it is a rescue pca that's what probably she is asking no 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 No. Yeah. So, uh, so this was now the slide like that. I mean, if it was a situation like patient was thrombolyzed outside, shifted, then patient is not having pain, and you see that anatomy at one in the night. Will you do it or will you uh, keep it in the? No. Uh, if the patient is not having pain and if the patient has been thrombolyzed, we would, we would we would not take up the patient for a rescue PCI at, at night. because we don't stay okay. in the hospital we have to come up come from home so usually such patients we don't completely electively do it on the next day or after one day even though the guidelines say do it within 3 to 24 hours, hours rescue pci if the patient is not uh, uh, having pain we do the uh, angiograms after 24 hours because uh, what we have seen is uh, rescue pci is usually there are a lot of thrombus and uh, not rescue pci the thrombolyzed cases uh, slow flow and all these breeding all these complications are more with those cases so if the patient is not having pain if the st is settled we usually do it after 24 hours for thrombolyzed patients so this was a patient who came uh, without any treatment he came directly we loaded the patient and uh, uh, take uh, took him up for primary pci now i think i can show you the previous case so this was uh, the last case so this was wired this patient was wired the lady total occlusion was wired and uh, we yeah, directly sent it to hey why don't you share your the... screen praveen you are not sharing your screen pardon 
you are not sharing your screen oh sorry 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 uh, i'll just do that yeah So this was the angiogram. Uh, the, we wired with a Xeon blue wire. So this was the uh, what we saw. We did a thrombus aspiration with the ox catheter. Did we see the angiogram? And uh, can you see that? No, no. Before the wiring, can you show the uh, LED left system quickly? Can you go backwards and show the primary anatomy? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. The RCA was totally occluded. We saw that. Yeah. Uh, this is the LED. Yeah. There's a long segment disease of the diagonal, and the LED is occluded diagonal. right at the ostium of the diagonal. Okay. Diagonal. And the circumflex, did you hope you remember it? This is the circumflex. Uh, there was something looking like a channel there. Okay. We didn't take much of too many views because we the patient was having a low BP, so we didn't want to use too much dye. Okay. So this was uh, after after wiring, thrombus aspiration. It was directly sent with the four into sixteen cerulemus stent. Post dilated with the four into six balloon. So this is the result after this thing. So we took a microcatheter over the Shion wire. So when we tried wiring, we knew that what we saw was actually a bridging collateral. So anyway, having taken this, we took a fielder XTA. Uh, it went subindimally. So then we had we took a Gaia second wire, it crossed the lesion, exchanged with the Sion, dilated with a 2.5 balloon. So this was the angiogram after balloon dilatation. So we took a 2.5, 32 stand down. And then another 2.532 overlapping with it. And uh, this is the and post dilated with the 2.5 balloon. The ostium of the circumflex had disease, but uh, we didn't do anything further. So this was the final angiogram. So did the patient stabilize after this procedure? She was very sick to start with. What happened to the patient after this? Patient stabilized. Praveen, can you hear us? He is having a lot of network issues. Signal, uh... Anyway, that was a great result, uh, Dr. Praveen. Uh, in the available situation, I think that was the best strategy. I'm, we are reasonably sure that this patient would have stabilized. There would have been some saturation issues of his primary lung condition. But obviously, from the cardiac point of view, I, we expect that the patient would have got stabilized. Um, uh, Dr. Sujada, you want to say something about this case? I think it was well managed. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did you do a troponin? Uh, was it uh, necutemi and uh, this, was this because that LBBB we had a doubt because of uh, LV dysfunction and global hypokinesia whether I let it, whether it was a culprit lesion? We had so many doubts at the beginning when we started the procedure. Actually, he is not available. He is not available. Actually, yeah, yeah. we'll we'll come to him. Yeah. He'll come. We'll ask him a little later. Yeah. 
Dr. Rajiv, any quick comment on this case? We are running behind time. Uh, yeah, that is uh, quite good. But then I am very respectful of diagonals. Here also it's a large diagonal which is ischemic because whenever you have a di occluded diagonal, uh, there is trouble. I, the amount of myocardium supplied by diagonal, you generally underestimate. I, I would say was flowing. This case because it is uh, approximately more, uh, we uh, intervene only when it supplies at least 10% of the myocardium. So a moderate size diagonal, three occlusions, I would rather uh, open the main vessels rather than no, going to a case. complex no. stenting. No, no, not in this case. I'm generally the, telling when you have a total occlusion, if the diagonal is occluded, then it's different unlike story. the previous. Yeah, Fortunately, yeah. this diagonal did not get occluded. It yeah. was almost remaining yeah, yeah. the it, same. It as was flowing. Sir. So, yeah, okay. yeah. so sir, would you uh, have done anything to the diagonal? No, no, I'm telling you, see, this did not get occluded. See, if the diagonal got occluded, things would have been different. What I'm telling is, people should know that diagonal is much more important than the what it looks like generally. Yeah. Because it can cause uh, major problems. If I were to do this case, probably I would have addressed it as a Maybe LED. I would have done it as an LED diagonal disease first, and I would have even staged the circumflex. The circumflex was an occluded vessel. It is yeah, not a culprit. Doctor Praveen probably likes. thought. Doctor Praveen probably thought that uh, the uh, uh, um, more revascularization is better in a patient with such a uh, compromised. Uh, he, uh, he came with a cardiogenic shock. That's why I uh, thought of opening it up. What happened to this patient, Doctor Praveen, after this procedure? He recovered well. Uh, he uh, he recovered well. I, I'll show you this. I, I think. Uh, no, it's okay. He improved. Can, uh, no, drastically no, no. improved. Yeah. Uh, and he was discharged yeah. on the fifth day after the procedure because yeah. they had financial uh, problems. So staying yeah, so every day, one, really even one more day, it was a problem for them. He had a mild elevation of serum creatinine, so I couldn't start uh, uh, any uh, AC inhibitor for him. It's a BP improved after the procedure. It improved considerably after the procedure. Uh, it almost he went with a normal BP when I discharged him, and uh, uh, he's now doing fine. Fine after ten months of the procedure, he's doing fine. We I advised see. him PCA to RCA uh, because RCA was a short segment, even though it was a total occlusion. It was a short segment occlusion, and there were good uh, retrograde collaterals. And so we thought we'll do a procedure, but they were not willing uh, for the procedure. And moreover, he had. Uh, only two daughters, both of them were staying outside Kerala, so in North India, so they were not okay. having any social support as well. It was a well done case, Dr. Praveen. Both the cases were excellent and a lot of teaching points. Uh, in the next one minute, we'll try to answer some questions before we go to the third presentation. Dr. Augustine from Vellore has asked a few questions. How to manage slow flow, no flow after stenting? Uh, Dr. Ashwin, uh, you want to say it was actually after your presentation, these questions were asked. Dr. Ashwin, are you available? Uh, uh, yes, the question sir. to you uh, from Dr. Augustine Vellore was to uh, was regarding these things. How to manage low flow, no flow after stenting, he has asked. Any, anything you want to say? No, definitely the regular drugs, nitro and uh, giving tyrofiban, nicoran. And um, sodium nitro crusade, I have not used as of, uh, I have not used. Uh, one thing after sending which we do is, uh, I don't know how, uh, what the literature says, but taking a micro catheter in and uh, delivering uh, these um, drugs distally is also, I have seen quite effective. One thing uh, we have seen consistently is, uh, you wire the vessel, the, the flow improves. Then you dilate with the balloon, excellent result. After stenting, also results are okay. But then, if you become greedy and do post dilatation, that is the time actually no flow happens. So, in primary angioplasty, probably you should take the right stent, do one dilatation, and keep it short and simple, is what I have learned. And you have to prevent no flow, slow flow, rather than treat no flow, slow flow. Before you stent, everything should be done pakka. You should give all agents under the sun have a well dilated vessel with excellent flow and quickly stent and avoid post dilatation as much as possible. Dr. Raji, you want to add something more to that? Yeah, you should try to avoid. And when you stent, most, uh, if possible, direct stent, uh, slightly longer stent and deflate the balloon very slowly. Don't deflate fast, just like in a in normal case. And if it's a, say, a large ecstatic vessel like an RCA, it's a good uh, option to put as spider display and then uh, do it. 
Uh, okay. uh, sir, can I add? Okay. Yeah, Ashwin, sir, go ahead. Sir, yeah, Praveen, Praveen, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 please. Pra, pra, uh, so, uh, actually, uh, I, when I went for a training in Japan, actually, they what they did was, uh, uh, what they used to do, uh, uh, I was for all the primaries, and if the uh, lipid core is liquefactive or a soft core plaque, they put a spider in all those cases. That is the, how they identify which case will give rise to slow flow or no flow. Earlier, we used to have the opinion that thrombus is what is going to cause mainly the slow flow. But Japanese, they believe that the uh, soft core or the liquefactive core, which embolizes, that is the reason for the slow flow or no flow. So that is how uh, they were doing the cases. Uh, so still, because we are not experts and many of us don't have uh, IVAS in our lab, uh, may not be practical. Uh, but this was one thing uh, which was new to me when I went there. You are absolutely right. That may be, that explains why after post dilatation, uh, the slow flow appears for the very first time. Even after the stent deployment, things are okay. The minute you do upsize the post dilatation balloon by a factor of 0 0.5 millimeter, that is when the trouble starts. And probably the Japanese are right in what they are doing. Uh, in like in most situations, and, and many, many, many cases, even NSTEMI cases, uh, even after many days, if you take up the cases, even after many days of the event, sometimes you find patients that develop in slow flow. So, uh, our earlier belief that it is thrombus may not be always correct. You're right, you're absolutely correct. And one or two, one more and, question, uh, and to one, Dr. Just, just, uh, just, uh, not just one point. See, if you are doing it, I have told it earlier, if you are doing a distal lesion and you develop. A slow flow and somehow you recover from that and if you have a proximal lesion don't do it unless it is critical because a second no flow will not be tolerated at any cost so this if there's another lesion proximally stage it okay point well taken uh, another one more question uh, dr agustin has asked dr ashwin is regarding this 0.5 uh, size uh, guide uh, lesser than the femoral guide when you do uh, radially to prevent left main dissection in your case. Uh, the, that's also, uh, we also use, uh, especially for um, females, um, uh, we also use three um, three uh, size guides. It uh, sits coaxially but support is one thing. Yeah, plus probably uh, definitely less traumatic, I would feel, um, uh, than a 3.5 guide. Okay. So, uh, we'll go to the third presentation by Dr. Chirag. Is, uh, are you fine? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I think so. Please, now, please yeah. go ahead. Please go ahead. Right, right. All right. I'm sharing my screen. Yeah. And, uh, hope it's visible. No. It's, uh, now it is coming. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Fine. So I'm going to present a couple of uh, one or two short cases. So this is uh, the 46 year old male who had presented with anterior wall ST elevation MI chest pain of uh, three hours duration uh, in Kilip class two. And uh, this is what the angiogram shows. RC was normal, circumflex was normal. And as we can see that there is a thrombotic total occlusion of uh, LED after a large S1. And uh, this is another image showing a mid LED total occlusion. So Sir, you click, up on for, uh, hide button. click on the hide button. Hide yes, button. Click on, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, is it visible? Hide. No, you can press on that. Okay. Hide. Okay. 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 Fine. Yeah. Just press. Ah, fine. Right. Uh, fine. Fine. Yeah. Fine. So I think uh, yeah. this was the anatomy and uh, right coronary artery was normal. So we took up for uh, primary angioplasty, transradial, six French uh, XB guide and uh, did a thrombosuction first. It was a large uh, sized vessel and uh, it appeared to be a good, a good amount of thrombus burden. We thought we'll do thrombosuction first, uh, but no improvement. Even after uh, uh, thrombosuction, the flow really did not improve. Uh, gave intracoronary tenofibane, uh, gave intracoronary agents that uh, to pre to improve some flow did balloon daughtering again two or three runs of thrombosuction but uh, did not uh, have any significant improvement in the blood flow so what are the options at uh, this point of time 
uh, whether we should straight away go with a direct send implantation with uh, this amount of uh, large thrombus burden we thought the chance of uh, no flow will be still higher even if we put a stent we can consider doing plain balloon angioplasty and see how the lesion looks uh, we can give intravenous gp 2b3 blockers for 12 hours 24 hours do a check angio and uh, consider stenting later laser as we know is an upcoming modality for such kind of cases when you think that there is a large thrombus burden in such kind of scenario and it's shown to have promising results of course it's not uh, available as of now with us but i think it's evolving modality which is going to be available shortly in india also and the last option that we thought was probably are giving intra coronary intra lesional thrombolysis when uh, uh, low pressure plain balloon dilatations and multiple thrombosuction did not improve the flow we thought uh, let us go ahead and uh, give intra coronary thrombolysis so with the help of micro catheter we gave about 10 units of reteplase slowly over a period of 10 minutes and uh, waited for another 10 to 15 minutes and thereafter we could take this shoot and we can see that uh, almost 20 minutes later we could find that the flow had improved and another 5 minutes later we further saw that uh, the flow had remarkably improved so having seen this kind of lesion thereafter we were confident that now we can definitely go ahead and put a stent directly uh, during giving retiplase we had lot of pvcs non sustained vts one run of vt which we had to uh, cardiovert patient had complaint of a significant chest pain even during giving intravenous uh, intra coronary intra lesional uh, uh, retiplase and uh, multiple polymorphic runs of vt so it was quite an unstable situation at that point of time through which we had to go through there was transient hypotension during giving uh, intra lesional thrombolysis and uh, ultimately the storm cooled down over another 15 minutes and this is what the re result was after 20 minutes of giving intra lesional uh, thrombolysis and uh, subsequently we put a 4 into 24 mm uh, direct stent implantation and as has been pointed out recently that uh, in all such patients it's a norm that we inflate very slowly and even slower deflation and uh, avoiding post dilatation so at times you may take uh, 0.25 to 0.5 mm larger size balloon or put under deployed or there can be another option of uh, taking a small size balloon and uh, a small size stent and put it at high pressure but in any case avoid post dilatation so in this patient we put up 4 into 24 mm direct stent implantation at uh, 12 atmosphere and uh, no post dilatation and this was the final result so this was a case where large sized coronary artery type 3 led had a thrombotic occlusion and we could get away with uh, giving intra lesional thrombolysis uh, it's not a norm in every patient and this was just a kind of bailout situation in this patient that we had employed and uh, certainly we don't have a lot of data for this kind of patients we have used it in some patients with acute graft occlusions uh, but uh, i don't think we have very large data to really quote Uh, about uh, its dose and its efficacy in routine primary PCIs. Uh, another another uh, experience that would uh, I would like to share here is that if the patient has infarct duration more than six hours or so, uh, in one of the patient when we had used it intra coronary intra lesional, that patient on day two developed uh, myocardial rupture and had died. So I think uh, it's not a very uh, uh, safe uh, option to consider in each every case. because giving in uh, this dose and giving intra coronary intra lesional probably at the level of myocardial architecture it still causes lot of disruption of uh, 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 vascular structures and uh, make lead to uh, uh, intra myocardial uh, hematomas and probably that is a substrate for even rupture also so this is just to share one of the case where we could get away with thrombolysis like this uh, case 2 is a diabetic male patient with a dilated cardiomyopathy diagnosed 5 years before had lbbb at baseline had a normal coronaries and then he was admitted with history of recurrent syncope and a history of heart failure for one day duration ecg had shown complete heart block with lbbb ejection fraction was 30% uh, left system did not show major disease and uh, if we see this is the rca which shows an osteal disease and uh, significantly tortuous scores and the lesion is there in the mid rca total occlusion patient had heart block so we had put up a temporary pacemaker in we taken right femoral arterial access took up 7 french jr 3 guiding catheter and uh, took up run through ns guide wire 
because there was osteal disease if there was no osteal disease probably we would have thought of taking even uh, amplats al1 catheter uh, but we thought that with osteal disease it would not be very easy to really go ahead with amplats we expected some uh, stormy course with this kind of anatomy so after taking uh, the 7fgr run through ns guide wire guide wire negotiation was not possible this uh, beyond this point across the stenosis distal into the rca because of proximal tortuosity and again with a poor uh, disease uh, with a significant disease at ostium the guide support was also poor and therefore we took up a micro catheter support and uh, thereafter we uh, could uh, negotiate further distally and thereafter dilated the rca ostium first with 2.5 into 15 mm balloon uh, fine cross allowed uh, guide wire negotiation into the distal rca and some stability was there but not really excellent to do such uh, case with proximal tortuosity uh, thereafter uh, dilated the target lesion with uh, 2 into 12 mm balloon at high pressure and uh, post balloon dilatation we could uh, see some improvement in the flow there is still some thrombus in the mid rc is still seen but at least integrated flow is established the uh, patient had hemodynamically been little stable uh, after that uh, as expected no stent or balloon could cross for the proximal tortuosity and therefore we thought that let us have some catheter stability first and stand the ostium first and that's why uh, a 3 into 18 mm uh, des was put at rc ostium and inflated at uh, high pressure uh, so that at least we have salvaged ostium so that the next assemblies could uh, be negotiated across into the rca uh, there is always a risk of uh, uh, stent uh, deformation especially the ostium when we adopt such kind of strategy but here because we are unable to uh, put up any stent down Uh, we consider that let us uh, salvage the ostium first and then do the rest of the things so after uh, uh, putting up the stent at ostium thereafter we could uh, take up the support with uh, guidezilla and thereafter deliver the stent into mid and distal rca two stents 2.5 to 20 and 2.5 to 24 mm were deployed distally into the rca by the time we realized that the proximal rca tortuosity following balloon dilatation passage of stent had shown some dissection and uh, to 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 salvage that we had put up another stent into the proximal to mid rca long 2.75 into 32 mm at coating atmosphere so in effect we ended up creating a full metal jacket in rca from the ostium and thereafter finally post dilated the ostium with 3 into 8 mm balloon at 22 atmosphere and uh, uh, this uh, was the final result of uh, the stent and this is how the end result was so i think uh, this was the last result that we could uh, achieve in this patient so in presence of diabetes silent inferior wall mi may present as bradyarrhythmic syncope and acute lbf osteal disease proximal tortuosity and calcification prevented delivery of guide wires balloons and stents adjunct use of fine cross aided micro guide wire negotiation with this rca help and stenting rca for ostium first and adjunct use of guidezilla allowed uh, uh, equipments to be negotiated distally for a success of salvage in acute, uh, acute mi so i think uh, this is the two cases that i wanted to present i had some more cases but i think the, for the sake of time i will uh, uh, in my presentation here for the sake of discussion thank you dr thank chirag you. for those two wonderful cases the first case was very exciting uh, when uh, it's a very vexing problem having no flow in the vessel despite uh, yeah. doing every effort and you had some multiple yeah. choices that you offered at the end of no flow the first choice yeah. was definitely a big no no you had asked whether right. it can be directly stented one should never do yeah. one should only stent after the blood flow improves and that's why probably you asked that question in the first place and that was a beautiful right. demonstration of uh, uh, retroplace actually opening up the vessel and uh, resuming flow as you very yeah. correctly said as a word of caution delayed thrombo de delayed intervention even in your case after everything went well there was hardly any tissue blush in the distal led i wonder yeah. if the lv really recovered to the extent you expected i expect that there was probably a persistent lv dysfunction based on what the anatomy the angiogram showed but it was a wonderful uh, demonstration of how rtpa works in such situations and one should never stent unless you see good flow so that is a excellent uh, thing and the next case you uh, rightly showed that deal with the ostium first because once the ostium is so diseased your catheter goes there is wedging patient develops hypotension patient develops st segment changes so you have to deal with the ostium often times you can do a balloon dilatation of the ostium 
and deal with the mid and distal LED and finally stent the ostium. Uh, yeah. But in your case, you are forced to actually stent the ostium and thereafter complete the stenting of the mid to distal RCA. Points well taken. Dr. Sujada? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Dr. Sujada, uh, you want to offer some comments? Yeah, I, I also agree with uh, the first case was excellent. I also agree with that intralesional uh, thrombolysis. The second case, I don't know where I've stented because anyway, I'm planning to stent from the ostium if any distension, I'm yeah. not worried. Yeah. But have, because then your sizing and all the number of stents also will reduce. Now you put four stents inside. Yeah. I think the problem was the fear of losing every support, especially the guide wire and this thing. And uh, without uh, having uh, cemented the ostium first, uh, we are little uh, uh, with the proximal tortuosity. We really thought that uh, taking the axilla in with this kind of disease will really be easy to take in. That's why we thought that let us salvage ostium first. That then you are sure that your axilla will be able to traverse uh, across the stented segment inside the proximal RCA. So just to ensure that the optimum support is there, and the ostia, that's why the ostium was salvaged. <laughs> Then put the guidezilla, deliver the distal stent, and come proximally. Yeah, that's agreed, my agreed. Usually, and, uh, one, that and one trick to prevent uh, and one trick to prevent uh, deformation of the osteal stent will be: you can take in your guide as you are deflating that balloon. The stent balloon, yeah. as it is being deflated, if you keep yeah. your uh, guide uh, nicely tucked at the level of the balloon, as the balloon right. deflates, the guide gets sucked inside without deforming yeah. the stent. And that so-called right. disease in the proximal RCA, one of the differential mm -hmm. diagnoses will be an accordion effect. One of the differential diagnoses in a very tortuous vessel, because of the yeah. stiff portion of the guide wire, you can get an accordion effect. You can always withdraw the guide right. wire as the opaque part is a little floppy. The, if the, the yeah. accordion goes away, you can avoid a stent. In mm -hmm. your case, probably Correct. you checked all that. Dr. Yes. Raji, you want to offer some comments about these two cases? Yeah, uh, uh, first case was uh, very good because you could see how the vessel uh, uh, got opened. But sometimes when you don't have any flow at all, you go on doing aspirations and the thing, uh, the thrombus can migrate proximally. So if you yes. start seeing that, it's a time for you to stop. Otherwise, uh, the inexorable uh, advancement can lead up to the uh, left main. So if you see that, you get better to stop there. In the uh, right. second case, the one uh, option is to use a cutting balloon for the ostium because you can't yeah. have a clean, clean planned dissections without much uh, un, uh, unplanned dissection. So you will get a good result. Then yeah. uh, maybe maybe put one more wire in one of the proximal branches. When you have an extra yes. wire in one of the proximal branches, the guide can be can either engage or disengage by either pushing or pulling the wire. So a lot more right. play you can have with right. an extra wire in a proximal branch. Plus, then right. cut the uh, before before putting that you cut the uh, ostium, then uh, yeah. put a wire, start then then start with from this cell. That's what agreed. I would have done. Agreed. 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 And when you when you come come to the ostium, sometimes uh, maybe some people use another wire to keep in the I had sinus to see the ostium very well. Ostium, uh, ostium. And, uh, uh, yeah, right. then so right. go into the LAO view and see that you catch the ostium right. very right. well. I think we also saw that there was a calcium in the proximal RCA and uh, tortuosity with proximal calcium. Yeah, we that's thought right. that uh, we need to salvage this with as as little steps as possible. And maybe that's why this was done. Uh, Sometimes it, it, it's an exception. I mean, we really don't stand the proximal lesion first. By norm, it has to be distal first and then proximal. But sometimes here it was putting, an a, because of putting a stent proximally sometimes can make it very stiff. Yeah. If, especially if it's a long stent. Yeah. So it was short, 3 into 18 millimeter. That's why it was yeah. purposefully a short one yeah. to start. Yeah. yeah. Did you keep a balloon inflated in the distal RCA when you took the guide cilla inside? Yes. 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 Then only it could be tracked. I mean, that was uh, otherwise this tortuosity was difficult to. So it was balloon assisted tracking of guide cilla. Uh, somebody has, uh, Dr. Augustine has again asked a question. Intralesional streptokinase, is it useful? Chirag, you want to answer that question? <laughs> uh, I mean, we, we haven't really used it, streptokinase. Uh, so really can't uh, say about uh, the use. We use retiplase only because there are some case reports with retiplase only. We did not have case with uh, streptokinase. And again, uh, with uh, allergic reactions and uh, uh, 
uh, fear of anaphylactic uh, reactions we really chose uh, not to use streptokinase and again retiplase uh, with streptokinase we would probably use the whole vial which will go into waste uh, giving a small dose but the whole vial will be wasted whereas retiplase already two vials are available so you can use only one and the rest can be preserved for future use so just to make it little cost effective and to be play little safe we thought it will be better if we take credit place in fact there has been some a lot of publications in recently dr jay gobal from palakkad uh, he presented a series yeah. of cases wherein he used tenecteplase intracoronary tenecteplase uh, showing that it is really really useful yes uh, i'll be um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Doctor, my uh, case is also about intracoronary thrombolysis so, so okay have, and uh, dr praveen before we go to uh, sarjan's case uh, sa- uh, i think uh, dr tony thomas from todubula has asked a very pertinent question uh, in a cardiogenic shock the patient is very sick so it it seems reasonable that you should do a complete revascularization but to the contrary in stable patients complete revascularization is better the patient is so sick that complete revascularization actually was counterproductive in some of the series dr praveen you want to answer that question shock in cardiogenic shock do you do only culprit vessel angioplasty and stage we, the non we, we have the results and of it. the culprit trial and all showing that you can can you hear me okay, highly broken uh, your uh, connection is very uh, your Hello? bandwidth is very poor actually hello okay we'll come to that question hello. a little later we'll uh, praveen will come to that question a little later i think your bandwidth is not uh, uh, good that's why we are having lot of difficulty in your uh, uh, audio the next is uh, dr lijo from uh, kovey medical center coimbatore he will show his case and we'll come to dr praveen's comment at the end yeah uh, thank you dr atraj i'll just share my screen yeah uh can you see the screen not really okay not so much not... yeah is it seen now yeah it is it is seen very well yeah right right so um this is a uh, interesting case which is done probably around 2 to 3 years back when i was in bellore so uh, this is a 60 year old diabetic hypertensive pressure with chest pain for 6 hours duration uh he was in tachycardia and hypotension bp of 80 by 60 in early pulmonary edema ecg showed uh, diffuse st depressions and infralateral leads with avr st elevation echo showed a global hypokinesia with ef of 35% he was troponin positive his hemoglobin renal liver parameters were normal so this was a high risk nstemi in cardiogenic shock as expected from the ecg and the echo we expect a log out the uh, multi vessel so this is we expect a multi vessel disease or a critical left main and uh, this was the angiogram which was done uh, so what what we saw was actually um, each time the tig entered the left main there was damping 
and uh, this was the left main lesion. Apart from that, there was also a uh, OM lesion and also the LCX, which was co-dominant. And the LAD otherwise was normal. Um, and the RCA was non-dominant. Circuplex was dominant. This is RCA, which is non-dominant, which uh, had a proximal lesion, but otherwise not a very significant vessel supplying the LV. Uh, so this was a situation where we had a critical left main lesion uh, with osteal left main disease, as well as dominant circumflex with an OM lesion, as well as a native circumflex had a lesion. And this patient was in cardiogenic shock. Um, we uh, started on inotropic support and BP was maintained. We did contemplate on uh, putting an IABP, but since with inotropic BP was maintained, we decided to proceed. Um, the plan was to do a PCI to uh, LCX, OM, and the osteal left main. Uh, and um, uh, my junior started the case and he started with a 6F uh, JL 3.5 with side hold. This was a radial. And uh, he wired the lesions using a uh, OM lesion with a BMW and LCX using a cyan wire. And uh, the circumflex was tendered with the Zion Sui 2.528, and the OM was tendered with a 27518. So, so this was the result uh, after standing. And, and what was interesting, what he had told me was to keep the guider at the ostium without much damping, despite having side hold, he had to actually dilate the left main with a 3 mm balloon. Uh, to have a stable working kind of, uh, you know, working light of thing with the BP being relatively stable. So after doing this, he decided to do the osteal left main and um, osteal left main actually, sorry. yeah, so, so um, right. So the osteal left main, since the osteal circumflex looked all right and the osteal lady looked all right, uh, he decided to just do the left main part of it, to stand the osteal and the proximal part of the left main with a very short uh, 358 stent at uh, 12 atmospheres. And this was stented at 12 atmospheres. And um, <coughs> this was the positioning of the stent. And this was the deployment of the stent. And uh, uh, then the balloon was taken back. And he was planning to do the 4 mm NC post dilatation. Uh, and a 48 ox NC was taken. Uh, for post dilatation, and that's when the problem began, and I was called in. Uh, this is how it looked. Uh, something was funny at this point, and then he took a. Uh, this was a four NC which was taken, uh, not eight. Sorry, this was four ten NC, an ox NC which was taken, and then we did a ten boost, and then we realized that there was no stent seen here. Uh, we couldn't visualize any stent here. Uh, it was only the balloon. So um, now we are wondering as to what had happened to the stent. Uh, now could it have gone distally? Very unlikely. A three point five stent has gone into the LCX. Um, could it have gone anywhere else? I mean, he was quite frantic in searching elsewhere. But one thing I was certain was the wire never came out. The wire always remained in position. So uh, so we started searching backwards on the guider. And uh, that is when we found the stent actually here. This was probably somewhere in the segment of the innominate. This was a radial procedure. So it was around the guide. It, the whole system never came out. So there's no way the stent can go out of the system. This is a stent probably around the level of innominate around the guide and it was floating here. Um, now, what are the options that we have at this stage? Uh, one option is you can actually um, deploy the stent here, but please, I mean, we have to remember that this is a innominate, which is usually 8 to 9 mm, and there's a 3.5 mm coronary stent, which, and then you have to shift to an O35 system, etc. And from the radial, it's going to be difficult without losing the stent axis. Um, other option is inflate a balloon inside, try pulling it back as much as possible and deploying it either in the brachial or further down. Um, but again, that we're not very sure what will happen. So one thing, thing that I did first thing was uh, uh, the guiders through the stand. Uh, so we put a glide wire into the aortic root. And uh, I've not, sorry, I've not shown those pictures. There's a glide wire which is seen through the um, uh, through the guider. And this glide wire, I've sent down the DT and down the femoral. And meanwhile, I put in a femoral arterial line and snared it uh, from the femoral sheath. Now, the reason why I did was that this was, this was an exchange and glide wire. Um, I wanted an access on the stent throughout. So I had a glide wire which went from the radial through the guide into the iota, down the DTA. And uh, it went all the way down into the femoral through the sheath and out. So at no point would I lose the access to the stent. Stent is not going to come out from the system. Wherever it goes, it will be on the glide wire. But thankfully, I, I, it didn't move anywhere. It was exactly at the same point itself. And um, uh, so we decided we'll take a snare from the radial 
you could see that uh, there's the um, uh, stent. If we took a snare from the radial sheath after removing the, gli the guider, guider was removed and took a peripheral snare and managed to, after multiple attempts, managed to snare the stent. You can see the snare catching the edge of the stent here. And this was this gently pulled back over the glide. Um, we knew we would be traumatizing the uh, artery to a certain extent by crushing and pulling it back. We had given enough sedation um, and uh, done this whole thing. The so stent obviously is crushed. It's pulled back. And uh, luckily for us, the grip was good and we could manage to take it out of the sheath. So this is the forearm part of it. The stent being pulled back over the glide and uh, and that is into the sheath. So this is came back easily into a sheath. It didn't get stuck at the radial or anything like that. So and so then what do you do? Um, so then we changed to a 7F. I, I had a family line, of course, but uh, the the went back. I, I just wanted to make sure that this radial, uh, the microtrauma, everything is sealed. So I put a 7F long uh, guider through that and kept that there to uh, sort of soothe in that area just in case. And then this was a JLS 3.5. And first thing, obviously, was you're dealing with the left main. So we did an IVUS. I don't have the IVUS images, sorry. IVUS showed actually the left main size was a 4.5. And my colleague actually put in a 3.5. Um, and uh, and then the option was again, do I just tend the osteal left main alone with a short eight? But then I decided safer to go into the LAD uh, to get a better anchorage. Again, two options at this point was whether to tend into the LCX, but I decided to go into the LAD because considering the anatomical supply of the LAD, it's a bigger vessel, didn't want to have any problems there. So we extended the left main to LAD using a four into 18. So this was how it looked. But again, after standing the LED, probably there was some sort of thrombus there, which persisted despite multiple intracoronary boluses of tyrofiban. And this again was a dominant thrombus, and we had already standard downstream OM and the LCX. So decided that we had to do a kissing balloon dilatation here. And we actually did a kissing balloon dilatation, but the that sort of ugly looking lesion at the ostium persisted. Um, so then I did a, a 4.5 NC pots uh, to oppose the left main part of the stent. This is a 4.5 NC balloon. And uh, then we did a kissing balloon dilatation. Even after the kissing balloon dilatation, the lesion at the sir costume persisted. So then the only option was to do a, a tap. And uh, after doing this, we did a 3 into 15 stent at the circumflex ostium. Uh, and we had a simultaneous balloon. This was 7F, so no issues with the uh, hardware going through. And once the stent was deployed, uh, the kissing balloon dilatation was done with the three same stent balloon in the circumflex and a 3.5 NC in the left main to LED. And the final pots was done with the same 4.5 again. So this was the final result, uh, which looked quite good. We did a final IVUS. Uh, again, sorry, I don't have the images of the IVUS. And uh, this is the final images in the PA caudal view. And uh, this was the RAO caudal view. So, so um, the final IVUS values were left main MLA was 14, Austral Lady stent MLA was 10, Austral LCX stent MLA was 7.8. A patient was weaned off iron probes in the 24 hours, discharged after three days, and he's on a two-year follow-up doing well, with the EF has improved to 45%. No angina, I've not done a repeat angiogram, but no angina, so he's doing well clinically. Always better to do, so take-home message is always better to do an IVUS even if possible in, in the uh, acute setting for a left main, staying both pre as well as post ideally. Um, and, and one thing I told my junior was uh, the circ itself looked like a 3 to 3.5 mm vessel. So when you have a circ which looks like a 3 and a lady also looking like a 3, very, very unlikely that your left main is going to be a 3.5. So he had done a probably a technical error in taking a 3.5, which was justified further in by the IVUS sizing. And of course, what are the options for a dislodged stent? See, many times you have a stent which gets dislodged off the balloon, but very rarely do you get a stent which gets dislodged after deploying. So, so I did discuss a few options. Uh, so that's my case. I'd be happy to take any suggestions or further discussions. Thank you. Uh, excellent case, excellent. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Lijo. And truly a mishap uh, well settled at the end of the day. Can you tell the chronology of events? You had a wire in the circumflex. You had a wire in the LAD, right? When the left uh, no, there was, there was being no, deployed, there, you had there was no wire in the LED. That's the other mistake. Uh, my junior didn't have a wire in the LED. He just had a wire in the circumflex. So the, okay. So the so the wire in the circumflex was used to stent the left main, right? 
Correct, correct. Okay. And his idea so was the, to stent only the left main, osteal and the yeah, proximal part. Got it, got it. So uh, once the stent was deployed, the wire in the circumflex is still there, but the stent got uh, dis uh, embolized where? That never came out. That that remained there. No, Sorry. where was the stent finally? The, where was the stent? In the innominate, you said. I, on, it was in the innominate around the guider. See, the 4NC four, four which was taken was an ox NC. So he went in with the 4NC while trying to pull back the NC. The bulky NC dislodged the stent and stent just flew back over around the guider into the innominate. So you had the stent which was... When you say, guider you're, talking, the guider, when you say the guider, you're talking about the guiding wire, right? You're talking about the guide wire. Uh, no, guiding catheter. But the, You could see, I, if I could just show you that... Picture. No, no, my, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Uh, so the wire is still in the circumflex, uh, right? Sorry, I'll just one second. Just one second, one second. I'll just show you that picture. Uh, one second. I yeah. thought that the, so uh, if you could just see her, inside the guy. Yeah. Yes, you can see this is a stent. I'll just play that. Uh, this is a stent. So you which have to, you, came, you have it's a 3.5 stent. Your guide is only at 2 mm. So the stent actually came again. over the guide. So this stent is the, the guide. This, this is the JL guide which has gone through the stent. In the sense, the guide, the stent has actually come back over the guide all the way back here because the 4NC balloon pulled a deployed stent back. And that actually just slipped back and came with the blood flow, came and got stuck here. And that's why I was able to pass a glide through the uh, guider and then slowly remove the uh, guider and then put a snare and take it out. So the stent was outside the guide. Is outside the guide? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> this is the price. The stent is outside the guide because yeah. what had happened was a 3.5 stent was floating in the left main. A uh, ox 4 NC, which was very bulky, went in while trying to pull back and position it. It dislodged the stent and that actually came back over the guide and went up to the nominate. My question is, how can that happen when there's, when there's a guide wire uh, within the stent into the circumflex? If you have no, 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 the stent was not in the, the circumflex. circumflex. Right. It was only in the left main. Right. What yeah. happened was mm. the well, stent was deployed a little bit more to a bigger size than the guide, so it went outside the guide and moved up. Went up. It is not the guide. Why is it there? The stent was deployed. Wire, deployed had a larger the lumen than the guide itself. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. But then you you have a wire in the distal circumflex. It's there. Then how can it come out of the guide wire and go into the innominate? Correct. Is no, my it's, question. It is so the the stent is uh, outside the wire as well as the guide with the wire yes. through that. Through that. Because it's thankfully the wire didn't come out at any larger point. mouth. Correct. And Dr. Praveen, we can't hear you. You're on mute. So my question is, when you have a guide wire distally, you could have taken a 5 mm balloon and oh. inserted at the tip of the guide catheter and pulled the whole assembly backwards. Yes, yes. That, that's one of the options I, I, I did mention. Uh, that, that's certainly. So there are two, three ways of dealing with this. One because is are, not just your, five, even. You have stent is around you can the take guide any catheter. Side. Yeah, we can do that. We can that's do that. that that's all. Those are yeah, the various yeah. options. That was the reason for my confusion also. You have a stent within the guiding catheter, right? Yes. Yeah. Not within, outside the outside guiding catheter. Outside, outside the guiding catheter. Oh, around that, around the guiding catheter. Around, 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 around the guiding catheter. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Right, right. It's not within. See, it's a 3.5 stent and the guiding is a 6F, 2mm. Got so it, this came it. N sharp. It's a JL, coaxial. So it just came outside and just went up to the nominate. Then how did you snare it? Can you repeat the process of snaring? Yeah, so so the, I, I put a glide wire through and through and removed yeah, the yeah, JL guider. Your, gli your, your glide wire will go all the way uh, into the iota. Then you remove the and guiding fact, catheter. Then you remove yes, the guiding catheter. I removed catheter. the guiding catheter. And then over the glide wire from the radial, I took a snare, peripheral snare. And then okay. caught it. Thankfully, it was remaining there and caught the edge of the stent. Okay, fine. Right. So uh, here, the uh, I, I think what would I, I would have done is I would have try to pull it at least into the axillary or the brachial yes. artery and then correct, correct the correct. wrist manual what you have done because yes, uh, if correct. something happened then you have cerebral embolism and those things would no, be so avoided. No, so the thing is he was well heparinized and one other thing which I had done was I had, I had snared this glide from the femoral so that the stent is remaining okay. on this glide. You know, it's not going to go out at any point. It will be on the system. Uh, it cannot embolize. He had the yeah, other exactly. end. It cannot embolize. 
He had yeah. a uh, he had a well, radial artery to femoral artery. Radial uh, uh, right road. Right yeah. only where to take it out from above or below. Below, <laughs> correct. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, well, when, well, you're, well, when you're uh, junior colleague position position that uh, stand, uh, I miss my beat because it is not at all coaxial. It is, correct. Uh, uh, it is so angulated and without a correct. wire in the LED. It's uh, a uh, danger in the waiting. And and, and, okay. and of course, the, the old thought which says, no, I mean, your LCX itself is looking like a 3, 3.5. Your left main cannot be a 3.5. It yeah, has to be at least a 4, 4.5. Right, so sizing is, so sizing basic. is one thing. The lower end of the stand is at least 5 millimeter into the IATA. Because the yeah. angulation, because you should have it's taken like a, the yeah, guide right. a little below and then uh, yes. made it quiet. One, one of the reasons for having that awkward position of the stand was it was on a circumflex wire. Uh, Absolutely. So that's another thing. LAD that's another learning point. Be, yeah. Absolutely. So when you do osteal left main or a proximal standing, ideally should be on the left main LAD wire. Absolutely right. Even then, you can have pushed down and yeah. then made it quite safe. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, Dr. Lija, one question. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, please, had, you, you had that haziness at uh, Circoplex Ostium. Yes. Uh, did, you, did you see on IVAS what it was before really deciding to put a stent? Because right. the moment we put a stent at LM bifurcation, the whole thing changes as far as the long-term prognosis of the patient is concerned. Yes, so correct. I, I mean, at that point of time, I did not do a I was See, I did dilate the struts, did a kissing balloon dilatation. I could have done an IVAS, but, you know, taking an IVAS through a JL guide, through a left main, through a strut into a circ, that was a Vulcan IVAS that we have, not the smoother one, which is a little bulkier. I, I, I wasn't too confident and we had enough drama for the night. So I thought safer option is to turn it off. You know, it is an excellent uh, retrieval of a stent and a uh, very unusual yeah. thing of it coming outside the guide, along the guide, yeah, very, very, yeah, unusual. very, very unusual. I mean, very unusual. I've never Correct. seen this actually. Uh, was sir, it carinal? Uh, that circumflex, was it carinal shift and maybe we could have avoided a stent true, in the circumflex? True. Absolutely. That, that, I think that's what Dr. Chirago is trying to ask. Uh, probably because we know that the osteal LAD and circumflex did not have angiographically much disease. Maybe my, my only thing was uh, this was a dominant circ and we had intervened with already two stents on that particular circ. I didn't want to, you know, have some sort of thrombus sitting there and occluding the vessel. So that was the reason that I decided to intervene on that. Yeah. Intervene on what? The osteal circ. Okay. Osteal circ. I made it a copper bifurcation. Or osteal left main? Osteal no, the the left main. I extended the left main to LAD. Circum there was flight. pinching of the circ and yeah, the yeah, question yeah, was about yeah. a carinal shift. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. You had to finally do a stent in the osteal circus. Yeah, well. like a tap. Yeah. So you had finally four stents. Four stents, right. Uh, and a fifth stent which got yeah, wasted. No, five. <laughs> five for the patient and then five, four in the coronary. Five in the coronary. Four in the coronary. Anyway, yeah. nice, nicely done case. Excellent case. Yeah. This is what the idea of this entire yeah, yeah, session yeah. was. Yeah. Have more complex problems actually. And how we get out of the problem was the question. Before we go to the last case by Dr. Uh, Sajid. Just, just a moment. Not, uh, not answer. I think last time uh, there was a question whether to do a non culprit artery in the in a cardiogenic shock patient. Yes. Uh, see, uh, I think earlier we had the data recommendation telling that we should do the non culprit artery. We had the ESC guidelines, I think, uh, recommends doing that. But recently there are some trials, I think, uh, some culprit shock trial or something, which was uh, published this year, early this year which said that there is no advantage of doing the non-culprit artery. But the ESC 2018 guidelines definitely says that you should do the, it is a two-way recommendation to do a non-culprit artery in a cardiogenic shock. More than but not later, a recommendation, it can be sometimes counterproductive. The patient is so sick and you do multiple things, you may be doing more harm. ESC 2018 oh. guidelines, they, rec they have a class 2A recommendation based oh. on the shock trial. And now based on the culprit shock trial, there is a, it is not recommended. But what my idea was that patient, if you have more than 50% of the myocardium jeopardized, uh, the patient is not going to recover. That was my thinking in that case. He had a diagonal which was having a tight lesion, a circumplex which was not, uh, which was having just a thimmy one flow and a totally occluded RCA. That's that's why I did that case. Uh, they attempted that uh, circumplex during my 
Yeah. Okay. We have our the, the question probably stems from the fact that it was not a straightforward circumflex. If it was a, a juicy circumflex lesion, type A lesion, etc., things will be easy because no, it was total we, occlusion. We, we, you needed a micro yeah. wire. You needed some stiffer wires, guide wire escalation, and things like that. Probably that's why the the that person does. who asked the question asked the question. That's no, the, no, uh, the data is uh, also there regarding that. Now that Rajiv is a very uh, diagonal, uh, particular interventional cardiologist, I will give you the opportunity to answer a question from Dr. C. H. Rajkumar from Karnul. He has asked you the question. He didn't ask you. I am asking you the question. What will be the strategy for a patient presenting with acute anterior wall myocardial infarction with angiogram showing large diagonal? So you love a diagonal, especially if it is large. Osteal critical stenosis. LAD is normal. Large diagonal critical osteal disease, disease Medina 001 grading. Um, it should be 010, I presume, to stent the diagonal or medical management. Obviously, Rajiv will right. say stent right. the right. diagonal. Sir, yeah. the large, it's a large diagonal and acute MI. I will send, but then we'll make sure that uh, you keep a wire and maybe a balloon in the uh, LED. And then protrusion has to be very, very minimal. The, you crack the upper end up and the lower end, maybe. Uh, one straight across. So you I can agree with you. We have done a few cases yeah. like that. I agree with what Dr. Rajiv says. So now that we you have can, uh, finished four cases. Uh, regarding, uh, uh, can I interrupt? Uh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, regarding diagonal ostium, I mean, if the angles and such things are such that uh, it is likely to protrude into LED and uh, what the fate of that kind of stent could be. Other option could be to uh, do a cutting balloon dilatation at that D1 ostium uh, uh, and see how the product. result is. Yeah, right. and the other option could be to use a drug eluting balloon rather than putting a stent right away. So I think these may be two options short of stent uh, in diagonal. How many of you ended up putting a stent in the LED in the process of stenting the diagonal? Anybody has experience? Correct. So that's uh, the reason. Huge like, diagonal. Yeah, have you, have diagonal. you had experience? Yeah. Have you had experience yes. of stenting yes. the LED? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's a trouble. Right. And that's why that's the reason. So either you just do with a, a cutting balloon dilatation at D1 ostium see the result and just uh, leave it at that. Uh, it's a side branch, uh, though big, it may be supplying reasonable area, but I think uh, plain balloon dilatation at D1 should be enough. So the problem is when you have a very large ectectic LAD and a 90 degree diagonal, which is getting occluded, that is the main, uh, many times we face confusion there. When there is a size of the LAD and diagonal is more or less same, maybe we can do a sending from LED to diagonal, but sometimes you see large ectatic 4.55 millimeter LED and a 2.52 millimeter diagonal, which is getting occluded. Then a little bit case, of uh, diagonal stent protruding will not cause a problem. It's a large roomy LED. That's it's correct. not going to be a major problem. Correct. Absolutely. Correct. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, Dr. Sajan has waited enough for the evening. So <laughs> I thought he'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very patient. <laughs> okay, uh, Sajan. For your uh, nice case to come, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, please. Yeah, good evening, chairpersons and dear friends. I'm sure all of you are uh, tired and uh, waiting to. No, leave. not at all. Uh, we are <laughs> eagerly waiting for your presentation. <laughs> no, no, that's, it's, uh, that's it's, why you're uh, it, last. Yeah, <laughs> it's again a primary PCI. Uh, I mean, uh, it's a, uh, definitely because when we consider the challenges in a primary PCI, of course, uh, thrombus takes the number one position. And uh, this is one case where uh, we had to resort, uh, we had to use uh, three strategies for... Sorry uh, for interrupting it. you, sir. Yeah. Uh, so you have not yet shared your screen, sir. Oh, I'm he sorry. has not. Hmm. I thought he is only giving a prelude. Oh. Yeah. Your entire, uh, my entire screen, right? Or Yes, sir. Yes. Just click on that image and click on the blue share. You have, you have seen it enough. Uh, now the... Presentation. <laughs> is it okay? Is it uh, visible now, sir? No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yes. Now it is coming. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, so this is uh, again uh, uh, one primary PCA where uh, we uh, we had to do thrombus aspiration, uh, tirofiban, and uh, resort to intracoronary thrombolysis. So this was a 56-year-old male with a STEMI inferior MI. He came in hypotension and uh, with, uh, intermittent complete heart block. This was in the pre-COVID era, uh, Jan 2020. And uh, this, he, he was related to uh, one of our hospital staff members. This was the 
the left system was uh, unremarkable uh, no major decision sergeant so press on that hide no sergeant press on that hide no that yeah. that uh, that uh, that bar will go away. Yeah. yeah it's it's gone sir. okay right so uh, the left system uh, there was no significant disease uh, this was the uh, occluded right coronary we uh, wired with a bmw and uh, during the course of the wiring itself there was some uh, flow that was uh, established and uh, this was after wiring the uh, lesion thrombus and some uh, distal diastasis then we went ahead with a dilatation pre dilatation with a 2 into 15 balloon so after the balloon dilatation this was the picture after removing the balloon uh, we found that there was a lot of thrombus extending uh, right into the distal ca and there was also uh, occlusion distally into the rplb we gave uh, intracoronary uh, terofiban and uh, we had uh, we did uh, multiple runs of thrombus aspiration we got a lot of uh, thrombus but still uh, despite uh, getting thrombus with each run uh, there was still a significant uh, thrombus burden and this was what uh, it looked like because there was a, a lesion there distally and uh, with uh, reduced flow distally we gave a low pressure dilatation with the balloon distally also following which there was an improvement in the distal flow but the thrombus uh, remained in the mid and distal segments again uh, multiple runs of uh, thrombus aspiration was uh, were done and uh, still thrombus was persisting and distally also there was thrombus and uh, we felt that uh, putting a stent in this situation would be catastrophic because uh, there is a lot of thrombus left inside and the stent would uh, get occluded and uh, there would be no reflow so we decided to uh, proceed with intracoronary thrombolysis with the uh, tenecteplase we gave uh, 12 mg uh, through the thrombuster uh, right into the uh, mid rca and after 15 minutes uh, this was uh, the picture again there was no improvement we waited for uh, we did thrombus aspiration again and uh, waited for uh, 10 more minutes so at the end of uh, most 25 to 30 minutes uh, 25 minutes uh, this was the picture there was significant reduction in the thrombus and the distal flow also improved with the timi flow also being better so so uh, earlier uh, the thrombus was precluding precluding the stenting so we went ahead with uh, we did a qca we didn't want to uh, post dilate so we did a qca uh, took a 4 uh, 430 dash distally and uh, an overlapping 426 dash approximately and uh, this was, and uh, we were sure that we would not do any post dilatation for this patient so this was the final so there was some thrombus in the distal vasculature finally we end up ended up like this and we continued uh, we didn't give any more uh, terofiban because we had uh, used the thrombolytic agent and we continued uh, the patient uh, on uh, enoxaparin for three more days and uh, we didn't uh, and he was discharged in a stable state so i think we had discussed about the intracoronary thrombolysis earlier with the excellent case earlier with retiplase uh, in fact the concept uh, is uh, really old from 1984 uh, intracoronary thrombolysis with uh, urokinase and streptokinase in 2015 actually the initial uh, experience came with the intracoronary tenecteplase this was with 34 patients they used a dose ranging from 5 to 25 mg the mean dose was 10 mg and uh, the use of gp2b3 inhibitors was uh, almost 75% in this series and it was uh, found that it was effective in uh, more than 90% patients with one major bleed that was a gi bleed and uh, three minor bleeds which were all access related which are all femoral in in that series Uh, alteplase has also been tried for intracoronary thrombolysis the dose was uh, 10 mg over 10 minutes given by a gui- guideliner 
this was another series of uh, 30 patients uh, uh, in uh, European Heart Journal 2014. In those patients who had uh, thrombus grade 4 to 5 with failed thrombus aspiration, uh, being given intracoronary thrombolysis with PPA or tenecteplase. And uh, here again, uh, the most common vessel was obviously RCA with uh, ectasia found in 17% and distal embolization in one third, which was actually the reason why they decided to give the thrombolytic agent. Again, in this series also, the GP2P3A receptor inhibitor of use was 50%, and 75% uh, of the patients underwent uh, stenting, and there was no major bleeding. Uh, this was what uh, Natarajan sir had mentioned earlier regarding the Indian data, uh, which came in Indian Heart Journal. This was by uh, Dr. Jagobal. Uh, he uh, had used uh, tenecteplase 6 milligram intracoronary followed by 24 milligram IV. That is one fifth of the dose intracoronary and uh, the rest uh, as IV, followed by unfractionated heparin infusion for 24 hours. That was uh, uh, a different uh, algorithm was tried. Uh, in 2020, this year, there was a meta-analysis of uh, 890 patients uh, receiving PCI and uh, low-dose intracoronary thrombolysis, and they had uh, supported, uh, uh, there was uh, no significant difference in major bleeding, and it seemed to be a reasonable option. Now, the future, this year, uh, to now uh, restore MI with the tenecteplase at one-third of the systemic dose, and also with retoplase, uh, uh, recruitment has started with recover 2, with intracoronary retoplase. 9 milligram or 18 milligram. I think uh, uh, in the COVID era also, uh, heavy thrombus uh, burden is uh, likely to uh, be uh, on the up. And uh, many of the series have shown that there is more of thrombus and multivessel uh, thrombi and uh, more of uh, stent thrombosis and inflammation related thrombosis and more use of uh, the gp 2 b 3 receptor inhibitors and uh, more of thrombus aspiration use and uh, higher dose of heparin needed to achieve the target ACT. We are noted in patients with COVID STEMI. Uh, so uh, I think uh, to conclude uh, with uh, uh, thrombus being uh, the major villain in primary PCA, uh, we should think about targeted augmentation of primary PCA. Uh, <coughs> first line of... Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good Thank night. you. Thank you. Thank you.